This is Newsmax TV Money. I'm Greg Brown. We're joined today by legendary investor and commodities expert Jim Rogers, chairman of Rogers Holdings. Jim has taught and written best-selling books on investing. His keen appreciation for commodity investing trends has made him independently wealthy. He continues to actively invest and learn about global markets, insights he generously shares. Welcome, Jim. I'm delighted to be here, Greg. Fed Chief Ben Bernanke just reiterated his pledge to keep rates low for an extended period, which many people take to mean at least until the end of this year. Is the dollar done? Well, I think it's a terrible, terrible mistake what Mr. Bernanke is doing. Uh, he is essentially ruining the U.S. economy in the long run and ruining the U.S. dollar as well. I, I, I cannot fathom what the man has been doing, and it's all of us are going to pay the price. We are paying the price, and we're going to continue to pay the price. The U.S. government will run massive deficits for years to come. For investors, how serious is the inflation risk? Greg, it's not a risk. It's here. It, uh, I don't know if you go to the sh to go shopping, but maybe your butler does your shopping. But the rest of us, we know that prices are going up, whether it's insurance or entertainment or education or fuel. I mean, the price of everything is going up, and we all know it. Go to the grocery store. Go with your butler next time to the grocery store, and you'll see the prices are going up of everything, and they're going to get worse because Mr. Bernanke and the people in, in Washington are spending gigantic amounts of money which we don't have, and somebody has to pay for this. There's no free lunch. Considering that inflation, how safe is the dollar, and what percentage of a person's portfolio should be in cash and dollar-denominated investments like stocks? Well, stocks are doing okay, and stocks will probably be okay for at least a while because all this money is being flooded into the, into the economy. And when all this money is flooded into the, to the market, it has to go somewhere, and a lot of it's going into stocks. And that's why stocks have been going up, and why they will probably continue to go up at least for a while. They're going to go into something. So I, I'll have to let everybody make their own decision about how much money they want to put into the stock market. But if you're going to have cash, you ask a very perceptive question, what kind of cash do you own? If you own U.S. dollars, you may find that you're losing money eventually down the road. It so happens that at the moment I own the U.S. dollar. I'm optimistic that the U.S. dollar is okay as a place to be for the short term for some technical reasons. But longer term, the U.S. dollar is a terribly flawed currency. Gold has settled into a range now around $1,100. If the dollar gets crushed, it seems likely that gold investors will prosper. Do you agree? Well, traditionally and throughout history, whenever paper money has been debased, people have put their money into real assets as a way to protect themselves, whether it's gold or zinc or cotton or whatever it happens to be. You put your money into something that will not de decline in value as the currency declines in value, and gold traditionally has been one of those things. You've been right on top of the oil price for a few years running. Gas is topping $3 a gallon already. What's your outlook for oil? As I was saying, there is inflation in, in the land, despite what the people in Washington tell us. Uh, the, the surprise is going to be how high the price of oil stays, Greg, and how high it goes. Known reserves of oil are declining at a fairly steady rate, and unless somebody finds a lot of oil very quickly in a very accessible area, the price of oil is going to stay very high and go much higher over the next decade or so. It looks like most of the big banks are on the rebound, yet foreclosures mount and toxic assets are still on the books. Any chance Wall Street will collapse despite the bailouts? Oh, the next time we have a recession, Greg, yes, we're go the next recession is going to be worse than what happened uh, recently. Remember that the government is spending huge amounts of money now, and it's increasing its debt. We will have another recession. We've had them every four to six years since the beginning of the republic, and we'll have another one, say, and you pick the year. When it comes, it's going to be much worse because, I mean, Washington cannot quintuple its debt again. Mr. Bernanke cannot print much, much, much more money again. I mean, the world's going to run out of trees at the rate he prints money. So the next recession is going to be much worse than the last one. Could the USA or Britain say really default? Well, there's a very good chance, if you ask me, that, we, that, that you will have more sovereign defaults or, national, or countries defaulting in the, in the next few years. I, I know people who are, are sure, in their own minds anyway, that the U.K. will default. I know people who insist that the U.S. will be defaulting within the next five years. I have not done enough homework to know that, 
But I do know that they have run up staggering uh, debts in Washington, and that usually leads to problems down the road. We've covered a lot of ground here. Any trends you're watching I might have missed and that our viewers should hear about? Well, I would urge our, your viewers to, to learn about currencies because we're going to have more, more turmoil in the currency markets, and that's going to affect all of us, believe it or not. The euro has been having problems recently because of Greece and some other things. But we have some huge imbalances in the world, Greg. All the creditor nations are in Asia, China, Korea, Japan, Taiwan, Singapore, Hong Kong. I mean, there are gigantic amounts of assets in Asia. All the debtor nations, well, you know who the debtor nations are, the U.S., the U.K., all these gigantic debtor nations are in the West. Throughout history, when you've had this kind of imbalance, it has led to problems in the currency markets, and problems in the currency markets frequently lead to problems in our daily lives, whether we know it or not. So I'm going to see, I think I'm going to see more currency turmoil in the next year or two. I would urge your, your viewers and listeners to learn about currencies. Most people don't even know that the U.S. dollar can go up and down against other currencies. It can, and it can cause problems, and also can cause opportunities. What's the exit here? I, you've posed a pretty serious problem, and I'm wondering if there's a, a, a policy decision or a way out that you would recommend at this point for the central bank and our government. The central bank, abolish the central bank. They're causing the problems. What do we, what do we need the central bank for? Greg, we've had three central banks in American history. The first two disappeared. This one's going to disappear too, but under Mr. Bernanke and Dr. Greenspan, I mean, the mistakes that they've made. They've taken on gigantic amounts of debt that you and I are now responsible for. They've printed gigantic amounts of money that you and I are now responsible for. Central bank is making it worse. Yes, we would have some problems without a central bank, but the problems with the central bank are worse than those without a central bank. That's one place. The other place, of course, is you need to just stop spending. I mean, the amounts of money that they've run up, people talk about it's a problem for our children and grandchildren. No, Greg, it's a problem for us, you and me. These problems are here and now, and we're all, they're going to hit us in the face in the next uh, year or two, and then we're going to know how bad things are. We've been talking with uh, legendary investor and commodities expert Jim Rogers. Thanks so much for your time today, sir. I'm delighted, Greg. I'm Greg Brown for Newsmax TV Money.